Hello and welcome to Meriwether Living. My name is Gabriella and here where I live in Germany, spring has just absolutely sprung. Not only are all of the springtime flowers now in full bloom, but all of the trees all of a sudden have little buds and little shoots of green and it just feels like overnight everything is just turning green and it's just such a glorious, glorious time of year that I find to be so inspiring. And so in honor of this new flush of life, I thought I would share with you something that I've been really, really excited about anticipating myself for the past few months. Um, it's, it's something that I hope that you'll enjoy participating with me in, and that is a make-along, which is going to be beginning on May 1st of this year, a year-long make-along that I am co-hosting with my dear, dear friend Ashley of Paper Crane Yarns, and this is the Botanical Make-along. I, what Ashley and I had kind of thought of this together a few months ago, actually at the end of last year, and ever since then I've just been dreaming about this make-along because I love integrating um, botanical motifs, botanical textures, and just botanical inspiration into so much of my hand making, whether that be knitting, whether that be needlework occasionally. I've loved natural dyeing the last year. And so um, this make-along is going to be a space where we can just all explore different kind of ways of um, integrating botanical life into our hand making and um, communicating about it and being community about it and just chatting about it and sharing it together. And so, yes, this make-along is going to be beginning May 1st. So as of now, as of recording this podcast, there are still about three and a half weeks left um, of time. So hopefully I'll upload this soon. So you'll have a couple of weeks before the start date to also kind of get inspired and think up projects, uh, maybe collect patterns that you'd like to make if you want to participate and just to join us on this very relaxed and fun year-long kind of community endeavor, um, fun make-along. All kinds of hand-making projects are welcome. Like I said, needlework, cross-stitch, embroidery, um, knitting, of course, um, weaving, um, natural dyeing, botanical dyeing, um, you know, spinning. I really would love to spin some, like, nettle, you know. I, there's so many different things that, that we can do, but pretty much, you know, you're, you can go for it and do anything and participate in any way. And the way that you participate then, coming up on May 1st, and now you can already begin if you'd like, um, kind of as you think about ideas and, and collect your inspiration, is um, you can post your, your progress, your projects, your ideas, all under the hashtag, hashtag Botanical Make Along on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, that's where we'll be following along. And then also on Discord. I've created a Discord community, a Discord server, so that we can be in chat and share patterns and all progress and all those different things on Discord. Because I'm not always active on Instagram. I'll be active there and just kind of there all year long. But I'm so excited to, you know, create and make different things that are botanically, botanically inspired over the course of the next year um, from May 1st on to May 1st, 2025. Um, and yeah, and so in honor of this idea, and in honor of springtime, I've collected quite a few garment designs, garment pattern designs um, that I think are so beautiful and inspiring and can maybe also be inspiring to you and give you ideas um, for projects you'd like to make. Um, maybe even you'll just add a couple to your own personal favorites or cue and think about them for later on. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to talk too much more. I'm just so excited about this make a lot. I really hope you join me um, and Ashley. And yeah, Ashley is just such an incredible maker who also makes beautiful things, often inspired by botanical life of all sorts. So I'm really excited that we get to host this together and be together on this journey because she's just such a dear friend and an incredible artist and maker. Um, and of course, there will be a couple of prizes here and there along the way through the year um, from both Ashley and myself. Um, she's in the States and I'm in Europe, so we have kind of those two different places that we get to kind of come from um, as far as like, you know, our ideas and our own different perspectives, but it's really fun to just be kind of in this together. And yeah, I hope you'll join us. Without further ado, I have over 25 patterns here that I'm excited to share with you um, from designers who may be familiar to you, some who you maybe don't know yet. I've tried to find a diversity of designers um, and patterns and 
Um, there are free patterns that I've included here and I'll try to write chapters so you can find them here. Everything will be linked below and in the show notes on my website. So you can find all the patterns that I mentioned here. But I'm just going to jump right in and start with a designer. And so this, this designer is um, a huge inspiration when it comes to botanical knitwear garments and knitwear in general. Um, the first designer is Teti Lutzak. Um, she is for me actually in the last year a new discovery of a designer, but ever since discovering her, I've just, I, 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 I'm in absolute awe of her. I admire her so much. I love her work and I think her work is just really beautiful in that her designs are so like she has such a style and a voice artistically um, in her designs. You can see a design and you can you can see that it's hers. She just has a touch and a beautiful, there's just a beautiful essence to her work. Um, I knit her by Furka Vest at the end of last year and it is my one of my most worn pieces of knitwear. It's a gorgeous vest um, that has a really unique, exciting construction, but it's a very intuitive knit and a knit that I think would be perfect for an intermediate knitter. Um, and yeah, it's color work with some beautiful floral motifs. Um, Teti Lutzak herself, I think, was a botanist actually. And a lot of her work, almost all of her work, design work, all of her designs seem to be, you know, in some way inspired by nature. Um, and so her work and her whole entire body of work is definitely a place to go if you want to get some botanical inspiration. Um, the Bifurka vest is the one I, I knit. Um, she also has a Bifurka pullover, which is gorgeous. Um, she has the Between Petals pullover. Um, there's all, pretty much all of her designs, but these are some of my favorites that I have kind of at the forefront of my mind that I'd love to knit personally. The Floral Cocoon um, sweater is gorgeous. Or floral, floral Cocoon blouse, I think actually, is what it's called. It's gorgeous and soft and feminine and has a very large, beautiful um, botanical motif. Um, she has the Forest Keys vest, which is a very subtle vest designed with some color work. The Paulina pullover, which is just has these beautiful big flowers um, in the color work. And there's the Dark Moss pullover, which is more of a textural pullover. And I think it's an Aran White design as well, so it's a bit different, but also just so beautiful. This Dark Moss inspiration, I think it's just stunning. Um, she has the Grass Whispers, um, the Roots and Shoots, the Florarium sweater and the Florarium light sweater um, are some other ones that I just adore. Um, she has so many beautiful designs that are botanically inspired and she is, without a doubt, a designer to, to go to and to, you know, find a pattern by and to knit up one of her designs at least because they're just so beautiful. And she has really a, a whole a broad range of things from things that are maybe more accessible to a beginner, more, more a little bit more advanced pieces, beautiful silhouettes of all different kinds, um, you know, more tailored, a couple of more tailored pieces, but a lot of her pieces are very soft and feminine, which is just really wonderful and beautiful. And there's a certain elegance to her design as well, which I really love. Um, so that is Teti Lutzak and one of my current favorite kind of botanical designers. Another pattern, um, that I really, really am excited about um, is The Oak Lane by Katherine Clark and The Wise Weeds by Katherine Clark. These two patterns by Katherine Clark are just gorgeous. And um, she's just an incredible, amazing color work designer. She's gorgeous color work. Um, I think, you know, even outside of garments, she has amazing accessories, which also have botanical inspired motifs, color work motifs, but these two pullover designs are just out of this world beautiful. Um, and I think the Oak Lane and the Wise Weeds patterns are, I think patterns that could be, you know, really great patterns to use little remnants or smaller stains you have, maybe even scraps, depending on how much scraps you have, you have to look probably at the yardage for your size, but, um, I often find that actually with color work like this that has different colors, you can integrate things if you have remnants from other projects. Um, both of these designs are fingering weight, I, I think. Um, and so that also makes it pretty accessible. Maybe if you have like a 50 grams of sock yarn or something, depending on which color you have, you can maybe integrate that into those patterns, which I think is really exciting. And that those are ones that I maybe would wanna do with that. Um, I really love these designs and I would love to knit one of these. In the coming year but i mean i don't know i probably don't know how many i'm going to get to i'm such a slow knitter i'm consciously slow i love that actually I love to be a slow knitter but that sometimes means i mean it will always mean that i never 
knit all that I wish I could because there are just so many gorgeous patterns. But Catherine Clark is an incredible designer and these two patterns, Oak Lane and Wise Weeds, are two beautiful botanical designs. Um, now kind of going in a different direction, um, I have found uh, a different, going out of the fingering weight and out of the color work into a kind of textural, heavier weight kind of direction. Um, a pattern that I found that I really, really adore is called the Braids of Grass pattern. It's Braids of Grass um, by Albina McLaughlin. This is just a stunning design and Albina McLaughlin designs beautiful, beautiful knitwear. Um, and this sweater is a pretty simple simple design in the sense of it being very elegant and it has very streamlined lines but it is an Aran weight sweater so you knit it with Aran yarn so heavier weight yarn and um, it's textural so it's not color work and that kind of botanical inspiration comes more from the textural side and I think one thing that I love about textural designs when it comes to you know being botanically inspired and inspired by nature is that it integrates not only the visual of you know plants but also the the tactile. Um, I just know that one way that I love to be in nature and in creation is to just feel the texture of leaves and grass and moss and um, I feel like you get to wear, you know, this this braids of grass um, sweater. I just feel like you're carrying with you kind of just a bit of, of the forest and I feel like, I don't know, that's why I just want to knit it so much because I think it will be such a warm, wonderful beautiful piece. So that is another design, The Braids of Grass by Albina McLaughlin that I just adore. Um, another one that I really love, another two patterns that I really love um, are by the designer Amanita Agnata Makovich. She designs really beautiful, beautiful pieces. She has two, also another kind of direction of design, two kind of t-shirt and tank top designs that I think are gorgeous. The first is the golden oak tank top, which I think is a beautiful design and would be one that I know I would love to wear in the summertime. Maybe would be kind of a summertime knit for me, although I kind of have this game plan that I want to knit pieces off season so they're ready for the next season, you know? Um, so like, it sounds maybe crazy, but I think I'm thinking like I should knit a tank top in the winter or like next spring, because right now I just want things for autumn because I'm such a slow knitter, it's going to take me a while. I don't know if I'll have a project even done by the summer, even though we have a couple of months. I don't know. So I, I feel like this golden oak tank top that I would love to have in my wardrobe and love to knit. And it's just beautiful and simple. Um, but this golden oak inspiration um, in the little textural, textural bits in this beautiful tank top is just so lovely. Um, and then the other pattern by Amanita that I just love is the plant lady tea. I think it's so cute. I love the name the plant lady tea. I think it's adorable. Or I think it's even just called the plant lady. I don't know if it's called the tea. I wrote t-shirt because it looks like a cute t-shirt design or a blouse design, but it's called the plant lady and it has this little texture, this kind of lacy um, cable motif that is just beautiful. Um, and so this is another pattern that I think would be such a fun knit and such a fun way to have um, a simple design, but integrate just a little bit of a botanical inspiration into it. Kind of carry that with you as you wear the piece afterwards. Um, it would also be fun to gift someone something like a, a blouse or a tank top because it does take a little bit less work than like a full entire sweater. Um, but I think can be very, very wearable. Um, knitted tank tops and t-shirts are really wearable, I find. So yeah, those that's the other, the next design I have here. Um, now, the next design that I want to share with you um, is called The Moss Slipover by Maria Eseva. Um, it is a kind of a DK. It's a lace and fingering held a double, but it's a gorgeous slipover. Um, this is a really cool design that I think can be really adjustable to different kind of sizes. I, I often feel like I fluctuate in my sizing at this season of my life, and I think many women feel that way. Many people feel that way in general, but I um, think that this slipover is a really beautiful, elegant textural slipover that would just be a really nice one to have just in one's wardrobe as a little layering piece. I love slipovers. I love vests. I think that they're just so wonderful and they add such a cool, you know, vibe to an outfit. And so this is one that I definitely have on my list as well. And I think it would be really fun to knit. Um, the next design I have is the Peony Sweater by Siwa, Siwa Reginato. 
And this is a DK and lace weight yarn combination. Um, so it's an Erin equivalent, it said. It's also a beautiful textural design, and I love peonies. Um, I was once upon a time a florist for a couple of years and had an apprenticeship as a florist and studied floristry and floral design actually in a couple of different countries. And I loved, loved floral design. And I always said my favorite flowers were peonies. And I know that's a bit of a basic thing to say because peonies are just like, I feel like many people's favorite flowers, but peonies are just so beautiful. And so um, this design, I think the softness of that lace um, lace weight, the kind of the mohair held double with the other yarn really reminds me of peonies. And the sample that you see in the picture is just this perfect peony color. I love the shape. I love um, just the style of this sweater and could definitely see myself knitting this as well. Um, the next sweater that I have is the Tulipa sweater. And this is a fingering weight sweater with just a gorgeous, gorgeous color work design. Um, and this tulipa design I think is really unique. Just I think it would be a really good first color work project or if you haven't knit much color work It looks to me like it would be one that might be a really fun kind of challenge For someone who's maybe knit one or two color work projects but wants to go into it I think it looks like also a very wearable sweater a really beautiful sweater um, And that has color work and has that interest, but isn't also like overwhelming like kind of like a huge deal out with color work. I don't know if that makes sense. I just really love this design and I think it's unique and something that would be really beautiful. So yeah, this is the Tulipa sweater. And the next one that is going in that tulip kind of theme is the Tulip by Melody Hoffman. And there's also the little tulip. So there's a child sweater and an adult sweater version of this. And I've seen this design many places. I know Melody Hoffman is a gorgeous, amazing designer and very well known. Um, you may be familiar with this design already, but I just thought it was a wonderful, wonderful example of having kind of a kind of an integrated bit of, of botanical inspiration without it being over the top or something which is very challenging if you are maybe a new knitter or um, if you don't feel like you have the capacity right now for like you know, sometimes you just one doesn't want to do a big color work project or lots of texture and lots of different twisted stitches or cables or anything like that. And then just having this little tiny detail, this little tulip detail, this scalloped detail on this pullover is so beautiful. And I feel like just encapsulates um, this beautiful floral concept and this feeling of tulip. So um, I love this design and I really think it's beautiful and would be a perfect design for um, someone looking for something a little bit more subtle and just with that little bit of botanical inspiration And I think the little tulip is so so cute. I would love to knit it for one of my daughters, too I think it's so gorgeous and um, also just so refined in a way with that little bit of scalloped Tulip edging um, those little petals. I think it's so beautiful And this is knit with a sport weight equivalent. I think this may be actually um, Unspun yarn which this is knit with I'm not sure but um you know, a sport weight equivalent as well. And another sweater by Melody Hoffman, which I just think is beautiful, and I think also has some botanical inspiration for sure, is the Wild Posy. This is just such a gorgeous design. This is knit, um, I think also with unspun yarn in the sample, which makes it just look so soft and fluffy and luxurious. Um, but it is, it, it says on the pattern, it's worsted held double, which is equivalent to a bulky weight yarn. Um, and so you can kind of look and find a gauge that maybe is comparable to that with yarn. But I think finding something with that beautiful little softness would be beautiful. I'm not even having to necessarily have unspun yarn for that, but just something with some softness. I think it's just beautiful. This wild posy, just thinking of a little, a little posy of wildflowers is just such a lovely concept and very much speaks to my inner kind of botanical inspired, botanically inspired aesthetic self. Um, the next sweater, which I really am excited about, is the Anemone sweater um, by Marita Clements. And this is a gorgeous design with big, bold colorwork flowers. Um, it's so beautiful and the sample it has these vivid colors. I think it's so beautiful and would be such a fun knit and a fun piece to have in your wardrobe as a staple piece or kind of like a fun playful piece um, to bring some color into springtime. You could knit it of course in neutrals. You could knit it you know in tonal colors. I love tonal color work right now. I love like 
you know, two shades of blue, two shades of purple. You know, I love kind of also low contrast, but you could choose and it would completely change the vibe if you did a lower contrast or a high contrast, um, you know, color, color, you know, for the main color and the contrast color. And I love these big motifs. I think this is such something I've been seeing a lot lately and really enjoying is bigger floral motifs um, as well as smaller little dainty ones. Um, but yeah, this is beautiful. And this is it, on the project, you know, on the Ravelry page, it says that it's Aran weight yarn. Um, I think the sample is also knit with unspun, but I mean, Aran weight yarn is also really nice and can be a really fun kind of more accessible way to knit up a colorwork sweater as well, I find, um, because Erin weight, just because of the heavier weight and the gauge, it knits up so much more quicker and you get to see the progress so much um, more quickly than if you're knitting a fingering weight colorwork, colorwork sweater. And um, maybe, you know, if you're not used to knitting colorwork at a fingering gauge in a garment, that can feel, it can feel slow. Um, and sometimes, you know, to get kind of the ball rolling in your color work life. It's nice to have a more, you know, maybe an Aaron Waite project. So this anemone sweater is amazing. Um, and actually I'm going to continue on with another sweater, which is called the anemone sweater. Um, it's totally different, but it is also called the anemone sweater. But this design is by um, Pernilla Larson. And there's an adult version and a child version. And it is so beautiful. It's now these are smaller motifs after the beautiful big bold one. These are like little tiny beautiful little floral motifs on this sweater, and it is actually um, knit with fingering and lace weight yarn held double. It is so beautiful. It is so cute, and I actually have this. I have the yarn for this for knitting a, a child's version for my daughter because I just think it is so cute and classic and fun and I think the knitting process would be would be so much fun. So this is definitely one that I'm going to be knitting because I have the yarn for it for sure. Um, we'll see when I cast this one on because I already know which one I'm going to cast on first but I'll tell you when I get to that one. Um, but yeah this is the Anemone sweater by Pernilla Larson. It is so gorgeous. Um, the child and the adult version. I just I just don't know. It's it just it just has my heart. I love it. Um, the next one I want to share with you is one that also just took my breath away when I saw it. Um, and this is the coverlet by Olivia Glennon. And oh, this design is just so beautiful. I love the sample colorway, the colorways that were chosen, um, so beautiful. And this design is in um, the Pom Pom Quarterly issue 48, spring 2024. I think that's, this is their last issue of Pom Pom Quarterly. It's available digitally. And um, it's such a tragedy. It's such a, you know, a, a, a tragedy that Pom Pom Quarterly um, is closing its doors. But this design, and this issue actually of Pom Pom Quarterly is so stunning. It has gorgeous, cool, amazing designs. And with this cover design just spoke to me personally so much. And when I saw it, it just spoke to my love of botanically inspired knitwear and, and you know, um, color work motifs but also it spoke to kind of my love of fairy tales and my love of history because the, the winding beautiful kind of vines just it reminds me of like Dorn Röschen, Sleeping Beauty. It reminds me of, um, yeah, just like kind of like this kind of medieval fairy tale otherworldly look. And this is another design that once again you could choose two colorways of any sort and it would change the whole vibe. I mean, that always is the case with color work, of course. And that's the beauty of color work and the beauty of knitting your own clothing because, and your own garments because everything's so customizable as far as color goes. Um, and I, I am someone who I love color. I'm, I just love color. Um, I love wearing color. Um, but I think this is one. I think maybe also because of the beautiful intricacy of the design that I would love to knit in two neutral shades. I have like played with many ideas. I, this one is definitely on my list of wanting to knit at some point. Um, but I think I'd love to knit like, you know, kind of like a, a soft ecru, maybe almondy shade, and then like a dark, rich, um, kind of brown, barkish, chocolatey brown as the contrast color. I don't know, That's I just would love to have kind of a more neutral combination for this one for myself. I think that would add to this kind of mysterious element but I mean there's so many beautiful combinations and I love their sample combination um, but yes this is the coverlet and 
it's one of my favorites as well. So I mean, I feel like I'm saying that about many, but there are just so many beautiful ones. Um, the next pattern I want to share with you is the Vine Top by Athena Lu. It's a light fingering weight, um, two, two light fingering weight yarns held double for sport weight. It's a beautiful springtime, summertime um, top. This would be a gorgeous, gorgeous one to wear then in warmer weather. I think it's very elegant and has this beautiful little vine creeping bit, little details here and there in the design, which just make it stunning. So I highly, highly recommend this pattern if you're looking for something like a top or some summertime knitting. This one's just beautiful. Another pattern that I think is, is really a fun one is the Wild Grass by um, Asya Janicek. It's sport weight yarn and it would also be a really accessible fun knit. I think it's beautiful as well. Um, now, the next kind of one that I want to share with you is um, actually a collection. And this designer is one who you may be familiar with. And if you're not, I highly recommend looking through her designs. She's a prolific, very well-known, incredible designer. And that is Marie Wallen, and specifically Marie Wallen's Springtime Collection. This collection is eight patterns, eight beautiful, really botanically inspired pieces um, from textural pieces with lots of cables and lace, it, lace to um, color work. Um, there are the, there's this top that I really love, which I know I didn't write down the name of it, but I just love this one top kind of blouse. I would I, That one has been on my two knit list for years, I feel like at this point. Um, there is color work, there's intarsia, there's you know, lace and, and cables. There's just so many beautiful, beautiful botanically inspired designs in this collection. And it's always just an inspiration, this springtime collection from Marie Wallen, as so many of her designs are. And a lot of her designs really do incorporate natural elements and botanical elements in them, I feel. Whether that be in color work and very beautiful traditional color work, as well as in lace and cable patterns. Um, most of the patterns are usually like sport, fingering weight yarn, um, occasionally DK, but I think most of them in this collection are also fingering weight um, yarn. Now, from Marie Wallen, I want to now enter into some of the free patterns that I discovered and have collected to share with you. The first one is a Marie Wallen pattern, the clover pattern. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous pullover, and actually one that I have languishing, that I have knit about three quarters of one piece of. It's a pieced sweater design. It's a free offer from Marie Wallen. It's a free, beautiful pattern that she offers. And um, the reason why I haven't finished it and haven't worked on it is because Truthfully, I know that it's not going to fit me because I started knitting it at a time where I was a different size. So right now it's just not going to fit me. And so when I get to the point where I know it's gonna fit me again, I will continue knitting it. And if in a couple of years I'm like, I'm never gonna fit it again, then I will probably frog it and, and knit it again because the yarn I have for it, I just love. I have beautiful Rowan felted tweed in a gorgeous colorway that I definitely want to have. I definitely want a clover one day. Um, yeah, but right now I just have put it aside until the right time comes for me. But if you enjoy cables and lace, and if you enjoy that beautiful intricate look of Marie Wallen's patterns, the beautiful tailored look, it's just, they're so impeccable, her designs, like really truly impeccably made and designed um, and really classic. I highly recommend this clover pattern. It's so beautiful. Um, and, um, and it's free, which is amazing. And so the other, some other free patterns that I've collected that I'm really excited about um, are the Daffodil Vest by Aubrey P. Boussac, which is a very um, lovely vest with a very beautiful, simple lace design on it. To me, it looks like a pattern which would be wonderful if you've yet to lit, knit lace in a garment setting. Um, I think that because it is such a, a simple, continual kind of motif, you'd get used to the design really quickly and it would become very intuitive and it would just be a lovely, elegant piece to have in one's wardrobe and it would be wonderful to have throughout the year as well. I think it would be nice to have a little layering piece in the summertime and summer evenings, to have in springtime kind of in between the seasons. So this daffodil vest is just lovely. Um, I really think that there, there are actually three drops designed that I really love. Um, the first Drops Design is Tulip Season um, by Drops Design. Um, it's an Erin Waite knit, which I think is really fun. 
for um, a color work pattern like I talked about before. This looks really gorgeous. It has these tulip designs on it. It looks so much fun and like a really fun knit. And um, with Erin Weight yarn, Drops yarn is of course very affordable and this pattern, this would be a really wonderful budget knit that could give you a piece which is just so much fun, one of a kind, and um, it's just beautiful. I really, really love this design. Um, another design which is similar, kind of in essence when you see it, is Spring Parade by Drops Design. This is knit with DK weight yarn. This is also a cardigan and also just a beautiful springy floral kind of motif color work um, pattern, which is beautiful. Um, and then the third drops pattern that I think is so, so cool. And this is maybe out there for some of you, but this is the um, Jumper with Roses. Now this pattern I think is so much fun and so cool. There are only two project pages on Ravelry, but I think this would be such a fun piece to have in your wardrobe. It has such a kind of bit of like a 80s, 90s vibe to it and would be just such a fun cozy sweater to knit and to have. I love roses. I love roses in knitwear. I think roses are so beautiful. If I see color work with any kind of rose in, in, involved, I am like definitely there. I love it. Um, and this is just such a fun kind of out there, out there design. I just love it so much. And um, one that I could see myself knitting though, I think probably I've got way too many before I'll get to that one. Um, it still seems like a lot of fun. Now, um, yeah, I have two more patterns to share with you. I'm gonna share with you my, my first knit, very last. Um, but the next one I wanna share with you, the next free one is called the Hyacinth Leaf Cardigan by Lois Young, which I think is a gorgeous, gorgeous, classic, beautiful cardigan that's just so elegant and wonderful. There's lace texture um, on both sides of the cardigan and then there's lace, I think, on the sleeves. And there's just these details which make it really, really beautiful. And Hyacinth, I think the inspiration with Hyacinth is just beautiful and, and so lovely. So I really love um, this design and um, yeah, it's it's free, which is so generous. Cause I really think it's a beautiful, wonderful design that I would love to knit up myself one day. Um, I think finding the right kind of um, yarn would also make a big difference. You can knit it in cotton. I'm looking and seeing, it's actually DK weight yarn. Um, you could knit it in cotton, you could knit it, knit it of course in wool or in linen, and I think maybe like a cotton linen blend would add also a bit of a different kind of beautiful drape to the design, um, just because I think of this lace, which kind of makes it a little bit more airy, but also those kind of the lace, which adds that little airiness is also nice with wool. Um, but whatever you choose, yarn-wise, it would really have a beautiful effect on the on the design, the end product. And so this high synth leaf cardigan is just, so gorgeous and a wonderful, wonderful free pattern offer as well. Um, the last pattern I have to share with you is the one that I'm going to be starting with. And this is just a very, it's almost like a simple pattern, but it's just so inspiring to me. This is the Rusty Cardigan by Steinem Berna, um, Gudjian's daughter. It is a gorgeous, beautiful, yoked, cardigan design with just a simple beautiful kind of a floral motif color work motif here around the yoke um it isn't a very complex design it isn't one with a ton of crazy botanical involvement but i just think these little sprouts of beautiful flowers around the yoke just speak to my kind of feeling right now in springtime with the life that's springing forth and the botanical life that's just coming out from all directions i feel like um i'm planning on knitting this in the yarn that this pattern is um, originally knit with, which is Plotulopi Unspun Yarn, um, which is really exciting for me because I've never yet knit with Unspun Yarn. This is going to be completely new for me. And this is also a steaked cardigan, I'm pretty sure, which is going to be completely new for me. I've never steaked before, which if you don't, aren't familiar, steaking is when you knit in the round. So you knit like, you know, circular, kind of like a pullover, but then you leave space in the middle and um, there's a process in which you then end up cutting up the middle. So you kind of fasten the yarn, whether it be through, often through um, crochet or through sewing, or sometimes you just, people just felt it. There's different ways that one kind of fastens the stitches and then one cuts up and then you put the buttons in and it's a sweater. And that makes it very nice to knit color work in the round, but I've never steaked before. So it's going to be my first steaking project. Um, and I, I have beautiful yarn already waiting for me to knit this pattern in. The yarn that I have also, I think is going to just 
have kind of like a beautiful botanical kind of essence to it itself, just with the colorways, the, the plot to lobe, the feeling of it. Um, and I think that's part for me also of this knit along, especially when it comes to knitting, that I'm really excited about kind of just allowing my imagination and my like kind of heart's desire when it comes to, um, you know, my, my internal connections I make with my knitting to kind of come through, if this makes sense. Like I often love to choose colorways that inspire me that are based on plants or flowers I love or um, that remind me of the forest or remind me of moss or different kind of things and kind of just really creating a kind of a, an experience for myself in the process and then also wearing the pieces, um, you know, and allowing them to just be kind of saturated with this beautiful botanical inspiration, something I just love. So that is definitely going to be what I'm doing with the Rusty Cardigan, which will be my first kind of entry to the botanical knit along. And as you know, as I've said, there are many more that I want to knit that I'm hoping to get to along the way over the next year. But we have still a few weeks before the start date, so there's lots of time to think and dream about what one wants to make, maybe gather supplies. Um, but I can't wait to cast on the Rusty Card again on May 1st. I hope you're going to join us, Ashley and I, in the coming year. Um, and... I hope that you found some inspiration from these patterns. Let me know if you have any patterns or designers um, with, you know, botanically inspired garments or accessories that you want to knit up or that you've knit up in the past. Um, tell me if you like, enjoy, um, you know, color work that's inspired by these things or textures and how you feel about it. Um, if you've ever knit with botanically dyed yarn or if that's something you'd like to do, I. I think it's all really exciting and I also really hope to get into some needlework this year as well because I just love needlework and Ashley's been doing cross stitch and I've been loving following her journey on her podcast um, as she's done cross stitch and actually already done such beautiful cross stitch pieces that I feel like just are so inspiring in this in this kind of inspired by the natural realm and just look beautiful so ah, it's such an exciting time I'm so glad that you're here with me and you joined me thank you so much for coming along if you're interested, you can, of course, join us, hashtag Botanical Make Along on Instagram, YouTube, and on Discord as well, which will be linked below. And of course, on my Instagram and my website, MerryWeatherLiving.com. You can find me on MerryWeatherLiving.com most often and most consistently. But you can also find me on Instagram sometimes under MerryWeatherLiving and here on YouTube where I regularly appear in this format. Thank you for joining me in my home. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time, whether it be going into the cooler months in the Southern Hemisphere or the warmer here in the Northern Hemisphere. I hope that you are safe and sound and doing so well and able to enjoy moments of making whenever you get them. Wishing you all the best. Goodbye!